So going back to looking at 2030, what are the biggest changes or change that, that you may expect to see? Maybe Nagishi saying, you want me to start with ladies? It's very polite of you. Uh, Minfun, would you like to go first? The next 10 years. We, we, we won't be sitting here anymore. We'll be uh, <laughs> doing some or something. Oh, excellent. I can't wait. <laughs> I don't think uh, there will be uh, questions anymore. No more, as we said earlier, no more data questions. Uh, quantitative data. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, I guess that we will be doing some gardening things and so on and so forth. I'm sitting here talking about this, all right? Um, second thing is like for data collection, as we mentioned earlier, there will be a lot more affordable data um, already with the consumer and so on and so forth. So the biggest chances I see is like um, we don't need a lot of long surveys. We don't. We want to be able to manage few words offline. Um, we would, be, we would still be talking to consumer face to face, but in different platform and method and so on and so forth, but not like door to door, checking, um, knocking the door and asking for appointments and so on and so forth. No way. Uh, that's one thing, I think. Okay. Tim, would you like to have a response? Yeah. We'll, we'll alternate between the uh, gentleman and lady. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I also agree with uh, Lin Fung about the move from uh, claim research to uh, record the behavior, real behavior. Yeah? But another thing I, um, I think that should have a big change that's uh, to how to measure the performance, uh, self brand performance in online. Like uh, Paul also mentioned about the e-commerce, right? Uh, we, I remember in around 15 years ago when I worked in uh, Unilever, I, uh, the client have a lot of questions about how to measure the sales performance in an empty, right? But now, um, e-commerce grow very fast. And I think that in the uh, next like 10 years, the contribution uh, significantly. And if the contribution in uh, online around 10 or 15 percent, definitely client will uh, force, will ask for measure. And uh, in the 15 years ago, for a measure of sale um, performance in MD, they only uh, uh, talk in the client side. And only think about the Nelson can do it. But I think that for measure the e-commerce uh, sale performance, my many clients, uh, many agencies that think that they can uh, do so. So that I think should be the big change. Should be interesting. I think Louise yeah. might have something to say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to add a bit of perspective because I, if I look back 10 years ago, I know this is a forward-looking question. Um, so I was actually based in Russia in Moscow um, 10 years ago. The internet penetration at that point, I seem to remember, was about 35%. And I remember pushing really hard to do online research. So this might ring some bells. And I heard a lot of resistance from companies and my colleagues about why this was a terrible idea. But you know what, we did it anyway, and now it's the preferred method of data collection, and it makes a lot of sense. So for me, I, I embrace the online opportunity, both for data collection, but also, as we've said before, it's where the consumers are, it's where the shoppers are, it's where you become aware of new products, of new solutions, so I think it will only increase. I think how things are today, when we think about online, actually, are we thinking online? Are we thinking mobile? That speed of change is only going to accelerate. And actually, one of the big things, and I'm quite new to the market, three weeks in, but one of the things that I anticipate is the progression that I personally have seen in other countries where you go from on, offline to online, and maybe mobile somewhere along the line and tablets and internet of things. Here it might leapfrog. So straight to mobile and straight to other solutions. Um, and I think that's where the future is going to be. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you. <laughs> we have a new friend. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of a different point of view. Uh, of course, from the asking to receiving, this is the same. But uh, when you think of the research, we are still competitive. But next, we, we, will, we are thinking of the custom inside. If so, our competitor will be Salesforce or Gartner. Maybe we are more collaborative partner. We are not thinking about the automatic the marketing crowd. If you look forward, are there any roles that you could imagine that some of the younger members of the audience might be in that might disappear? Whether it's client side or agency side? Perhaps it would be safe. Probably the team would be okay. We need to still, I mean, the, the, role, the biggest role for market research, I think, is not about, um, not just about data collection. It's about data reading and consumer mind reading. So um, the ability, the skill, um, that is very essential for researchers. The role that is essential is like how to read the data and bring that to life and make sense of data. So that's something that we still need. I mean, we don't have enough nowadays, um, and we still need more of that in the future. So that's the biggest role I see. Um, what about roles that might disappear? Um, few work. Interviewers, um, yeah, um, maybe even translator. You, you have like a automatic translation already, right? Um, multiple language. That's a very new, like, immediately come to my mind. Yeah, I also agree that for the interviewer role, uh, my. Uh, I don't think that it disappeared, but it will reduce a lot, yeah? And uh, because uh, it's changing by uh, raw data collection will be via automation uh, method. And I think that machine learning, they can uh, collect a lot of information to replace for the uh, personnel resource, yeah? And in terms of client, you also ask, right? <laughs> Sure. Actually, it's uh, so uh, difficult to answer, but to me, I think that's uh, not in the room. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, it's uh, I think that might be the role of a CMI manager is uh, changing, and they might be not need uh, a lot of people right now because. Uh, but at that time, because um, so I, I think that should be changing a lot, uh, a bit on that role. So maybe I might add a perspective. So um, my previous role before coming here was as a global business partner. So working with a couple of big uh, multinationals. And one of the evolutions that I have observed is actually CMI functions are shrinking in terms of the number of people. And the type of work that is being done is also changing. Some of that is being outsourced, whether that's to agencies, right, or even outsourced within the company but to somewhere else. But actually I think the biggest evolution is rather than people sitting, taking reams of data, trying to then interpret it, visualize it, and explain it to everyone else, the idea of data democratization and actually putting data in the hands of the decision makers rather than it be almost a funnel that passes through the hands of research or CMI or planning or whatever, whatever the, um, the function is called. And I think that that, if we go back to your point earlier, Richard, the researchers of the future need to be storytellers. They need to be able to take information and do something with it. The focus, the time that they spend won't be in terms of pretty charts. It will be about taking that information, quickly turning it into insight, and illuminating the way for the rest of the organization to go forward. Very good. Thank you. Is she going to need to have? That's just too much. That's a trick. Sorry. <laughs> More easy to understand because of the, for example, report or decision making, it means that no more report, making report anymore. PowerPoint, no PowerPoint. No, no more page, 500 per page. <laughs> no Excel, no Word file because of dashboard or something, more automatic, yeah, that's kind of more easy to understand. 
I do have more questions, but I would like to give the audience a chance. Does anyone have a pressing question? Uh, ladies first, Miss Poe. <laughs> hey, hello. Um, I'm working in industry for like 15, 16 years. I, I do love vision. I really, really love it. But uh, uh, in the past few years, with a lot of trends and a lot of changes, I constantly receive a lot of challenge questions from our client in the different sector than not at NCG. So talking about that now, you see it's more sector like banking, financing, insurance, lifestyle, technology going so well. And they constantly ask me the value of research in this kind of sector because they do believe that we are too slow <laughs> to keep up with. <laughs> so um, I don't know, I want to hear about like opinions, you know, like visions, point of view, whether we can handle those kind of questions quite challenging, but quite true about our industry. Do you understand the question? So sectors beyond CPG or consumer goods, challenging back to research on what is your value, where's the speed, we operate at a faster speed than you. What, any response to that? I'll jump in if you like. Right. Um, so, so first of all, I think it depends. It's a challenge for all of us who work agency side, right? If we can't demonstrate the value, then we're dead anyway regardless of what industry you want to focus on, whether it's FMCG or whether it's something else. However, if we can demonstrate a value, and again, coming back to this concept of illuminating the way, if we can help organizations, whatever that organization is, to understand how consumers or how people are acting, are feeling, are behaving, are making decisions, we can help them better tailor their solutions, whatever they might be, to the consumers and the users of those solutions today and in the future. So I think it's a very fair challenge, regardless whether it's FNCG or whether it's any other industry. Any other comments? You don't have to comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think uh, it's a very interesting topic. Um, we hear about it all the time. The issue with agencies is like we're dealing with different sectors and different clients, so they have different concerns and we have to make sure that we satisfy them uh, in different ways. So sometimes we are uh, too focused on something and then I agree, totally agree with you that we quite slow in adapting new technologies and evolving ourselves in terms of offering new things, innovative approach and so on and so forth. Uh, where consumer already like moved to the cloud, right? We still on few work, <laughs> so we too slow to adapt and to evolve uh, to catch up with the trends and so on and so forth. So that's I think the biggest challenge for Richard. Uh, I remember we heard about this like a few years back at, at the other Esteban. Um Not much that I've seen as a as a member um, to to really help um, resolving these issues. So I do expect that, uh, I mean, in the future, there's uh, new players or new business, uh, new offers, different ways, and so on and so forth. Um, at the same time, we also want to see the chances from the client side. The client need to be brave to make decisions on changing their way of reading the data, uh, way of uh, doing things. Um, as an example, we often hear the clients say, um, we've been doing a lot of research and have different insights and now we can't do certain things, we don't have the insights. And when I throw them back the question, like, how did you do that in the past? Um, they said they did this, they did this, and then we propose something new and they did not want to do that. How can we give them new insight or new way of looking things, you know, at things, if we don't change the way we collect the data, or we don't change the way we look at consumer, or read the consumer, I think that's another way, another challenge. Yeah, I would say to the clients in the room, if you're not prepared to change in the yeah. short term, great, you're saving your job. In the long term, you're losing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? that's, that's, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Ralph, you had a question. I, just a quick one to add on to that. Um, I, I think, Skitty, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you can't do something the same way over and over and over again and get different results. I think a perfect example, everybody's received 2,000 banking briefs about digitalization. And the thing is about coming up with a USP. 
And all these guys are doing the exact same thing because they're asking the exact same questions to the exact same wrong target audience and you get the exact same garbagey results. And that's why you see it's really not progressive. Uh, my question uh, for, for all of you yeah, but is that uh, I think Richard, you mentioned it very well. The competition is changing. Google, Facebook, Grab, Lazada, so on and so forth. Now, some of you have also said that, hey, the survey will die, okay? But I, I don't think so. But my question is, where do you see passive data linking with survey data? Because I see that as a big part of the future. So where do you see passive data, observational data, linking together with questions that we are using? Correct? Yeah. Anyone? Thank you. Can I say that? Yes, you can. Just give me. Oh, you want to answer? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I think I'm gonna, so thank you for those, uh, that's a beautiful question, Rob, and, and, and some of the, 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 the points that, that um, have been shared by the previous speakers as well as the panel members. And if I looked at uh, Vietnam, Vietnam has, is very well placed in terms of the adoption and, and taking on the future uh, of market research as well as the, the, the business, the industry in general, just because it doesn't have a lot of legacy to deal with. I come from the Philippines that we do have a lot of legacy, uh, I was born with a wired telephone, and in Vietnam, when I came here in 2004, there's no wired telephone, it just went on to mobile. So there's a lot of leapfrogging, and leapfrogging is such an important term or word that, that I think we, I, I learned when I was living here in, in, in Vietnam. And, and through the years, I think, as market researcher, I've, you know, and, and in, in answering your question, Ralph, the evolution of our role is basically from asking questions to observing to participating. And so in participating phase where we are in now, um, we have different levels of adoption. And, and passive data is such an important aspect in terms of trying to capture that and integrate that into a stated kind of data. That's why I think most of the agencies here, um, and, and Paul, I think, is, is one also of the experts on that, in terms of trying to, to study reaction time. So reaction time is such a, a good piece of information in terms of trying to pull apart Flatliners, or probably trying to to understand whether you have data really validated and whether it's an a, you know an accurate version of the truth. There's only one truth, but you know the way to get there, you really need to go whether it's a conscious or subconscious way of asking it. So it has to be part of the integration process. Thank you. It has to be part of the integration. Now we come. With, with passive data, you can get observation, i.e. behavior, and on the survey, you can get the, uh, the, the perception, blah, 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 right? So that's a nice way to make something like So let's take a health app. If I have a health app for human science, I can understand people's behavior in certain aspects. I don't necessarily understand the food they eat, where they eat, how they eat, who they eat with, and why. So if I combine those two together, I can start to understand a more holistic picture. Any, anyone else with an answer to that? I have one more question before, sorry. Okay, I, I think that it's a passive um, um, response and also uh, how to link it. I think it's also quite important. But the, the issue is, uh, I think that's the, because in the passive information is um, uh, has a lot and my DB cannot recognize which is value. And the issue is that normally the junior people, junior staff will deal with us and they play, they uh, find, try to make the report from that large one. And then senior people usually involve later. It's been after the stream from the junior people. So I think that might be the, the, uh, the limitation of the um, uh, passive. Thank you, Tim. I have one more question for the panel before I turn back to the audience. Imagine a scenario, you've only got a budget to invest in one new initiative for the coming decade. What do you invest in? You can only go in one area. What will you spend your money on? <laughs> okay, anyone? Where would you put your money? What would you bet on? I would, I, I would still put all my investment on finding the right person. People. people. I think mean, people is the best thing. You cannot change you you know human behavior. You cannot understand human behavior without having the right person reading that. Machine can can be available, 
but the one who actually use the machine and read the data is the human behind it. It's not, not machine. Okay. So. Thank you. Other, yeah, it's, it's expensive. I know data science. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My kind of same people, but uh, who can on site at the client side? That kind of people who can, right? That kind of people who, who we can have to educate, consult the client side, okay. at client side. Thank you. Um, actually, I also uh, think as a lead too that we focus more on the people. But another thing, I. Um, I think that it's also uh, should be focused on that the advanced uh, statistic analysis. Yeah. Say the scientists. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going to say the same as the other guys. Sorry, that's a cop out, but I think people and the right tools and processes to be able to take that information and turn it into insight. Well, anyway, primary data is still the differentiation the competitor. Because big data, everybody can see. Can use so if so, primary data is a differentiation. So key. Can I turn to the audience for a question, Paul? Yeah, can I answer that? Like, can, you can, answer? can you answer? You can answer. <laughs> when Paul's finished answering, I'd love another question from the audience. Sorry. No, no, because I want to give a completely different perspective. Right? We talk a lot about the ways we get data, whether it's through questions or, or observe. You know, to me, it doesn't really matter. The thing that is changing is that there's just a lot more data available. So data becomes a commodity. So if a research agency wants to survive and differentiate, they need to also have something else to offer. So where I would put my money is in finding the people that can build a certain level of expertise and like be a true partner to a client, for example, in ads or in communication or in e-commerce and then build the partnerships through that because the data, everybody will have. So if you want to survive, I think you need something else too and that's knowledge in the particular field. Hopefully that was short enough. That was perfectly short. Thank you very much. Any question from the audience? Going once, going twice. Is there any issues that the panel would like to raise? A final word of wisdom? A jewel? Uh, first of all, thank you very much for volunteering to, to be up here.